What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest. So we've got lots to unpack with Jamie Dimon coming on with some very interesting and bold comments about the central banks. Google, Visa, and Microsoft reporting earnings. So we're going to break that down. We've got some updates related to which stocks we're replacing in these market updates moving forward. And a separate analysis is going to be done on some other more speculative, more unprofitable companies in another update. And I've got a couple new indexes and correlations that I want to show you in this market update. So lots to unpack, sit back, relax. This is going to be a long one. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and find it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like and of course subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. That's all I'm asking in return. And also do check out the links down below if you're interested in joining. There is a 16% annual discount that's available till the end of this month. We'll love to have you on board and you get access to all the intrinsic values, our whole spreadsheet along with our 43, 44 members, members only private videos. And of course, uh, the mindset alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, and the early access to the members only MoneyVest Pro platform that's going to be released in 2024. So link's going to be down below. Again, uh, we'd love to have you on board. So this right here are some of the changes we're making. We're replacing Square with Visa. Okay. So a lot of you guys uh, commented in my previous market updates in the Discord. You know, Visa seems to be a very, very high quality, profitable company. So uh, you know, as unfortunate as it is, we're replacing Square for Visa and Shopify is also getting replaced by Costco in these daily market updates. We haven't made a lot of changes, to be honest. I mean, for the last two to three years, we've kind of kept it consistent with the Magnificent 7 and 8 stocks and kind of shuffled around a few companies here and there. Um, but we are including Visa and Costco now. Now, they're not going away. I'm going to be doing a separate video on another sort of uh, another analysis, so to speak. And that's going to include Squ Square, Shopify, SoFi, Palantir, Neo, and then maybe a few more companies if you want. We can add it to a separate list because this is obviously you can kind of get a good sense of what type of companies these are, right? These are not uh, profitable on a gap basis, whereas Visa, Costco, very, very profitable companies and fits well, much better than the likes of Big Tech and Magnificent Seven companies, right? So uh, those are some of the changes that we're making. And this right here is a brand new index that I'm also going to start going over in our analysis. And this is basically Magnificent Seven stocks. So this is uh, Apple, Amazon, Tesla, NVIDIA, Meta, Google, and Microsoft, including, and this is a index. This is an index that I've created on TradingView, and right now it's trading at just over 1,738, right? So just like it's the S&P 500, right? 500 companies and trading at over 4,000. This is uh, the index that I've created for Magnificent 7. I don't know if you can rename this or something, but uh, this is what it really is at 1,738. And it was up almost 1% on the day after hours. It's pushing up over half a percent because, of course, Microsoft and Google uh, are rallying. Actually, Google is down over 5% and Microsoft's up over 4.3 at the moment. So we got lots to discuss. But this right here is the index that we will also be going over in our analysis from a technical perspective, and I'll also go over the correlation coefficient, which I think is going to be very important as well. Anyway, so Alphabet reports 11% revenue increase as growth returns to double digit, but they did miss on Google Cloud. So EPS came in at $1.55, so beat on EPS versus $1.45. Revenue came in at just over $76.6 billion versus just under $76 billion in expectations. Advertising revenue came in at $7.95 billion, up from $7.81 expectations. Um, and traffic acquisition cost was 12.64 versus 12.63, so slightly higher than what the expectations were. And Google Cloud, this right here was the biggest uh, sort of letdown. Uh, Google Cloud revenue coming in at $8.41 billion versus $8.64 billion uh, for the company. Now, this is not a huge miss, right? But of course, as we know, Wall Street likes to really pick apart very, very small details um, in these earnings. And uh, I will be doing a more separate, more dedicated analysis on these companies right now. I'm just kind of going over uh, the summary and what the company actually reported. Uh, but overall, I would say very strong numbers, 11% growth, even in an environment where interest rates are high, advertising spend is down. Uh, I think 11% is pretty solid with a beat on EPS, beat on revenue, uh, beat on most metrics, beat on YouTube advertising as well. But of course, Google Cloud struggling a little bit with those expectations. Microsoft, on the other hand, profit popping over 27% as Azure growth reaccelerates. So that right there obviously was the big catalyst. And we mentioned this in one of, one of my previous videos that Microsoft Azure 
is going to be very important for the company. Uh, two ninety nine. That was the earnings per share compared to two sixty five per share expectations. Uh, they got fifty six point five billion dollars in revenue coming in uh, significantly higher than fifty four point five billion, and revenue grew thirteen percent year over year. And net income came in at just over twenty two billion dollars, increased twenty seven percent. An intelligent cloud segment uh, produced twenty four point two six billion dollars in revenue, up nineteen percent. And above the consensus of $23.49 billion. And revenue just from Asia jumped 29% during the quarter, faster than the 26% consensus among analysts. And a constant currency basis, Asia revenue was up 28%, accelerating from 27% in the fiscal fourth quarter for the company as well. So very, very strong numbers. And Microsoft is up a little bit over 3%. Uh, and Google obviously selling off over 5%. And we'll take a look at, again, in more detail, I'll be doing separate analysis and videos on these companies as well. Now, Jamie Dimon rips central banks for being 100% dead wrong on economic forecast. He says that prepare for possibilities and probabilities, not calling one course of action since I've never seen anyone call it. I want to point out that central banks 18 months ago were 100% dead wrong. And I would be quite cautious about what might happen next year. Uh, so really, I mean, you know, we've talked about this on the channel quite some time that it is, I think it's absolutely useless to make predictions. I think every um, sort of market analysis or any type of, I, I guess I, I get the idea of why predictions are somewhat necessary and important. But at the same time, I think it's useless because the confidence levels are so low. Like it's it's almost known fact that whatever prediction anybody makes, um, the likelihood of that prediction coming out absolutely correct is so low, right? So why even try, right? And we've talked about this on the channel before that I think it's a it's a lot more helpful to give an overview of the current state of the market, current state of the economy, and where we are in the present moment than trying to constantly predict what's going to happen tomorrow, a few weeks from now, a few months from now, a few years from now. Because at the end of the day, nobody really has any idea, you know, of what's going on because that that's how it is. That's Investing is literally quite dependent on predicting the future. And nobody can do that well, at least not consistently or accurately. So... Why even try, right? I think it's more important to just focus on the present and, and kind of understand where we are in this cycle um, and whether it makes sense to, you know, sit on the sidelines a little bit or how are markets priced at the moment, you know, from a valuation perspective, from rates perspective, uh, kind of having an overview of all fundamentals, technicals and macros, I think is a good holistic approach uh, to understanding current market levels. But uh, along with the misdiagnosis on prices, Fed officials, according to projection released in March 2022, collectively saw their key interest rates uh, rising to just 2.8% by the end of 2023. It is now north of 5.25% and core inflation at 2.8%, 1.1 percentage points below the current level as measured by the central bank's preferred uh, gauge as well. So, of course, that's where we are. And they also mentioned that inflation is going to be, quote, transitory, which... It never was. But uh, but nonetheless, I mean, you know, very strong day for the markets here. NVIDIA, Amazon, Tesla, Google, mostly for tech uh, rallying. So very, very nicely. And uh, we did have Coca-Cola up over 3%. I think Raytheon also had a very strong day. Last time I checked, uh, it was pushing higher. So up over 7%. So we had a trade idea on this, obviously. So congratulations if you are still on this a trade idea and coca-cola obviously also did rally very nicely up over 2.8 percent colgate on the other hand was up over 1.2 so again these were the three trade ideas in a video that i posted uh not this past weekend but the weekend before that um for the upcoming weeks and they have obviously performed really well so congratulations if you weren't able to take advantage of these ideas uh, but nonetheless we had almost all sectors in the green except for energy in the last one week we've got uh, almost all sectors, except for consumer defenses, which is slightly flat. Uh, all other 10 sectors are down. And in the last one month, we've got comm services uh, pushing higher up over 3.8%. Everything else is down. And uh, of course, when it comes to the one-day performance, soybean, we got natural gas, coffee prices, copper, everything pushing higher with volatility, crude oil, uh, corn, platinum, ethanol, everything selling off. But Bitcoin here, of course, very strong rallies. Uh, just a little bit under 34,000 and they're just under 1,800 as well. This right here is the meeting probabilities. Don't forget, we've got seven days, uh, a little over seven days left for the next FOMC meeting. And uh, October 31st and November 1st is when the meeting is going to take place. Um, 
and that obviously is going to release the actual uh, interest rate expectations, right? Jerome Powell's speech, everything. We're going to cover all of that. And this right here is the earnings, uh, excuse me, the interest rate expectations. Uh, right now, market's expecting a pause, obviously, and then are three rate cuts going into 2024 um, at the moment. So first things first, let's just quickly go over to the uh, volatility and of course crude oil prices. So volatility coming right back down under 19 and got up to as much as 23. We didn't quite get up to obviously over 24, 25, or 30 levels, but those are levels that I'm obviously waiting for, for serious buying opportunities, for serious dollar cost averaging opportunities, or even taking long trades uh, on TQQ or FNGU, a little bit more on the leverage side, but coming back down almost 7% crash here uh, under 19 once again. And uh, we've got levels to watch, 12.7 to 11.2. Uh, and of course, resistance all the way up to over 30 for the volatility. Crude oil prices also rotating back lower. And this is actually good news because for the first time, we are now seeing signs of a lower high. So this right here, a lower high just formed for crude oil. And if you do get a breakdown below $81, $80 a barrel, that's going to be great news and could potentially send us lower down in the low 70s for crude oil, which is going to take some pressure off of inflation um, and, and will create what will actually have one of those trouble of trifecta things, right? Off the table, meaning we have three things, right? Three things that are kind of hurting the market's ability right now to rally. That's where crude oil, dollar index, and yields. Uh, and right now, dollar index and yields are still pretty elevated. Crude oil is coming down. So that's going to be one of the three things that are coming down, uh, which is obviously going to help the markets um, a little bit. But of course, we still need to watch yields and the dollar index to also roll over. Uh, Bitcoin here. Very nice breakout. I did a Bitcoin analysis, crypto technical analysis, so make sure they do check out that video as well. But right now we're sitting just above that support of 30, 31,000, and the next target and resistance uh, is going to be all the way up to 47, 48,000 dollars. So that's pretty high, high up there, but that is going to be that next resistance uh, to watch. And for Ether, we're watching $2,000. That is going to be that next resistance uh, to watch and to pay attention to. And of course, we got a support inside this green rectangle uh, at the moment, sitting roughly at around $1,000 for Ether. Now, going over to this new index that I've created, right? This is basically big tech. And uh, what you'll notice is that we are on a very nice uptrend, obviously. And this is the overall higher low. This is a nice uptrending line, uh, which this index is following up with every time we come down uh, since 2014. It's been perfectly validated. And uh, this was the entire bear market of 2022 when this index was down over 55%. Now, the reason for that sell off is because it does include more volatile stocks like Meta, which was down over, I think, 60, 70 percent during that time. Tesla, which was also down pretty dramatically. Um, and NVIDIA, which was also down, you know, over 40, 50 percent. So that's why collectively this index was down over 50 percent. But since then, obviously, it has recovered back up to all time highs, up over 112 percent. Now, on the weekly time frame, you'll notice that it does seem like it's making a bit of a bull flag, right? So this is a perfect setup for a potential bull flag, right? And this could also, again, be considered as a little bit of a downtrend in the short term as well. Something that we have talked about for a lot of these individual companies. So if you come over to the daily chart, you can make a you can make a clear argument that, look, this is a downtrending channel. This is lower highs and lower lows. So big tech obviously is showing signs of weakness right now. Uh, but at the same time, you can make another argument saying that, look, this is also a bigger bull flag, which could lead to a potential breakout. Uh, to the upside, right? Back over 1945 and even higher up to 2,000, 2,200 levels. And that is, again, going to collectively lift the markets because guess what? The correlation for this index with the S&P, this is the chart that I wanted to go over also, the correlation uh, with the with the uh, with this index with the market is close to 70 percent, right? Or 0.7 is that number. But that also depends on how many days back you go to, right? So right now we're looking at 30 days. If I change this number to let's say 60 days, that correlation increases or actually decreases to 58. But if I go back, let's say 100 days, uh, it is going to be at 0.71. If I go back to 252 trading days, because that's pretty much a year, uh, we're looking at 0.94. Right. So you'll notice the longer you go back, the higher the correlation is for Magnificent 7 with the S&P, by the way. Right now we're looking at SPX. Right. So I can change this to the Nasdaq as well. The correlation will pretty much be close to one. There we go. So it's one. Right. Because Nasdaq 100 is pretty much Magnificent 7. Right. Over 30, 35 percent is Max 7. But let's just come back to the S&P because that's really the entire market. And uh, you'll notice over the last one year, the correlation has been 0.94. And that simply means that, look, we just need to figure out where this index goes. Right. If, if you can figure out where this index goes, we know where the market will go. And uh, right now there is, like I said, a little bit of a bull flag formation, huge resistance at 1945. We've got a couple alerts set up 
for a breakout for this. Now, this is not a tradable security. This is not, you know, a stock or an ETF or something. This is simply an index created on TradingView uh, to simply track the collective, um, basically collectiveness of the Magnificent 7 stocks. So that's really where we are. And 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 like I said, uh, very nice, uh, consistent downtrend. So lower highs and lower lows. So if you do end up breaking down and there's possibly going to be this previous resistance acting as a support right now, uh, that's going to be sitting roughly at 1700. So this right here, collectively for the market is going to be a reasonable uh, support for these magnificent seven companies where they have they have almost been validating these levels um you know at the moment so 1675 to 1700 very very nice validation of previous resistance from back in april of 22 now going over to the markets here so s&p 500 now um we have been on a downtrend, obviously, so a little bit of that momentum back up. So I mentioned in my yesterday's market update that I wouldn't be surprised if the markets do get a technical rebound, considering how oversold we are for a lot of individual stocks. So I think it's only normal for the markets to recover a little bit for us to get back up to possibly 4,300, 4,320s. Uh, but I want to still emphasize on the idea that we are very much in this downtrend, lower highs and lower lows, and we're not out of the woods yet. So Next target for the S&P, all the way up here, that's going to be sitting at 4320, 4330 for S&P. Uh, talking about the NASDAQ, same exact thing, right? So higher on the day, up over 93 basis points, a very nice move back higher. And that's exactly what we were also discussing in our previous market updates, that it's possible that the markets does see a technical rebound here back up uh, to these levels, back up to, let's say, 13,500 or close to 13,600. That's going to be that lower high inside this downtrend, inside within the context of this downtrend is something that we need to, again, pay attention to, right? We're not out of the woods yet just because the markets are getting a nice rally because this is what's happening right now, this right here, right? We can, we can rally within the context of a downtrend, right? This is three times it's happened. We're in a downtrend, but the markets can indeed go higher. And that's exactly, I think, what's uh, what's taking place at the moment right now. Now, going over to Apple. Apple here also seeing some momentum come back in at that support of roughly around 172. And, you know, we've got a big resistance sitting in the 150s, uh, excuse me, 180s right now for Apple. And uh, support level is going to be in the 150s, right? If we do end up breaking down further down uh, inside this downtrending channel, then, of course, it's possible for us to, you know, trade down to the lower lows in the 160s, down even in the 150s for Apple. So those right there are going to be some levels to watch. Uh, talking about Amazon, Amazon here also very much in the context of a downtrend, something that we have discussed. Resistance going to be staying put right here at 134, 135 and support level obviously in the 120s um, for, for Amazon and right now is still very much in the context of a downtrend. Now, Tesla, on the other hand, right, we talked about how low 200s is a very strong support. And that's exactly right, because it, last couple of days, Tesla has bounced back higher a little bit from that support. So RSI, MACD, very, very oversold. So it only makes sense why there is a little bit of that technical rebound for uh, for Tesla. And that next resistance is going to be all the way up to $240 um, for the company. So this right here is going to be that next resistance all the way up to as much as this lower high um, in the 250s for, for Tesla. So those right there are going to be some levels to watch. NVIDIA, on the other hand, uh, pushing higher a little bit. So up over 1.6%. So very nice rebound. And again, it makes a lot of sense because it came down to that support at that horizontal support here and then bouncing right back up. So lots of consolidation sideways uh, for NVIDIA. So this right here has been the range within which it's been trading uh, at the moment. And resistance, like I said, it's all going to be all the way up to 485. Support level is going to stay put in the low 400s for NVIDIA. Uh, talking about advanced micro devices and AMD also seeing some buyers stepping in just a little bit over $100 uh, at the moment. So uh, next resistance is going to be all the way up to $112 per share. And support level obviously is going to stay put in the low 100s. And right now we are very much consolidating sideways for AMD as well. So there's a lot of, it's either down trend or sideways consolidation for a lot of these magnificent seven, eight stocks um, at the moment. Uh, talking a about PayPal and PayPal here still struggling, um, all the pushing higher up a little bit over 1.4%. So not bad, not bad. Resistance is going to stay put right here uh, at close to $56. And of course, we've got all the way up to 65 uh, to as much as this gap here, which eventually may or may not get filled all the way up to uh, as much as $75, right? So uh, we got lots of supply, lots of resistance sitting for PayPal up top. And I think it's all going to come down to the earnings and how earnings end up being. Talking about Visa. So like I, like I said, 
excited, excited to introduce Visa in our daily market updates. So welcome, Visa, everyone. Um, but this right here is going to be the nice higher highs and higher lows for the company. And it's still very much in the context of a nice uptrend. So perhaps it is one of the few companies that is trading in a nice uptrend. By the way, they reported earnings after hours. So it looks like they beat on EPS and beat on revenue. I'll see if I can do a more spe you know, specific and more dedicated video um, on this company. But we do have a very strong resistance for Visa sitting all the way up to as much as $250 per share. And that's pretty much going to be the next resistance um, at the moment for Visa. However, I could also argue that there is a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern also forming, right? And and that is going to look something like this, where we've got a neckline sitting roughly around 228. We've got a left shoulder, a potential head, and then a right shoulder. And this right here is going to be the neckline and a potential breakdown could obviously send us lower, uh, possibly down to as low as 211, low 200s, right? That's something to keep in mind for Visa. But like I said, the next resistance is going to be right here at $250 per share. Uh, talking about meta platforms and meta here, uh, just consolidating sideways for the longest time. It's just been, uh, you know, trading in that range, uh, although it wasn't a downtrend, but then it started moving higher. So, you know, I could argue that this right here is a nice uptrend, higher highs and higher lows. And meta is actually one of the very few companies that is still trading in a little bit of an uptrend at the moment. And uh, right now we've got a huge support sitting roughly at $305, $306, like kind of like low 300s and a resistance all the way up to 325 for Meta. So this right here is the overall uptrend. They report earnings tomorrow. Right now they're down 1% on the back of Google earnings at the moment. Talking about Netflix and Netflix here continues to move up. So very, very nice move up and resistance is going to be $452. So this right here is going to be that level to watch. We've got a gap to fill here on the downside. Support level is going to be sitting put at $348. Um, but a very nice move back up. RSI MACD still has maybe a little bit more upside left and uh, resistance is going to be all the way up to 450s for Netflix. Uh, talking about Google. And Google here is to selling off down over 4.4%. You know, we got up to that resistance as discussed earlier in our previous market updates in the 140s and 140s, uh, 144, uh, and of course, selling right back down. And uh, tomorrow we'll see if the buyers do step in to kind of scoop up some shares or if there's more potential downside in the 120s for Google. So 126, 125 is going to be that next support level to watch for this company. Uh, talking about Microsoft and Microsoft here sell, pushing higher up 4%. So very nice breakout above $340. So this right here was the resistance that we were talking about for Microsoft for quite some time. Very, very strong and very nice breakout past that level. And pretty much that next target is going to be the all-time high at $366 per share. We'll go ahead and turn this level into a new support for Microsoft. Costco, brand new company, adding it to the, adding it to the mix. And this right here is another uptrend for Costco, very, very nice uh, higher highs. And uh, you could you could kind of argue that, you know, it's showing signs of some weakness because there is a little bit of that negative divergence uh, forming for Costco. So this right here is the lower highs as it's making higher highs. So there is maybe a possibility for some potential um, downside. And I think I've got a more extensive analysis here on Costco where you'll notice, you know, very nice uh, symmetrical triangle and then a huge breakout um, and Costco rallying over 17, 18%. Now coming up to this resistance right over here while it's making that negative divergence. So, you know, 529, 530 is a possibility for Costco. So this right here is going to be that support level to watch for the company moving forward. And finally, we got Enphase. Enphase continues to drop down, I think, a little bit over 1%, 1.5% on the day um, and selling off pretty much down to 94.40s, right? So 92 bucks, this right here, is going to be that next support level to watch for, for Enphase. And uh, and again, this is the same level of support from back in 2020. So we're hitting kind of like our three-year low for Enphase. But uh, but as I've said, like I think the valuations come down to some extremely cheap levels um, and they're still moving in the right direction. I think they're still progressing with the fundamentals in the right direction. But of course, the market sentiment is really bad at the moment. And the trend overall is, is pretty brutal for Enphase as well. So that's all for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, again, links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining and of course, getting access to all the buy and sell alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, members only private videos, uh, early access to the MoneyVest Pro platform. You can also go to moneyvest.com uh, and also the intrinsic value spreadsheet, which I think is going to be super valuable for all of you. So as always, happy investing and I'll see you all in the next video. Link's going to be down below, by the way.